Okay, here is the Nintendo Red Tent. Uh, I picked this up in Kansas City from a guy who is an operator of arcade games, and somebody had converted this to a JAMA, and they put Neo Geo in here, of all things, and they put a Neo Geo on each side, and they had they retrofitted the control panel for just a single joystick, and it was just all butchered and very, very bad. Uh, both of the monitors were dead. Um, one of them... Well, I, let me go back. Both of the yokes on the original, they had the original monitors in here, the Sharp uh, XM1801 ends, and both of them had a bad yoke. Uh, one of the yokes was sizzling and burning. The other yoke had uh, two open windings, and somebody tried to repair the monitors not knowing that it was the yokes that were bad, and they just completely and totally butchered the chassis to a point to where I didn't even want to try to work on them. I got one of them working, but it had issues, and you'll see pictures, and I'll talk about, I'll go through a bunch of pictorial slides and, and do a narration overview of the restoration of this here after the live part, but the monitors were beyond repair. Not, they're not beyond repair, but they're, I didn't want to spend so much time trying to get those working, so I just went ahead and took the uh, XM1801 chassis off the tubes, and I put K7000s on here with K7000 yokes. So we have the original 18-inch tubes in the in the machine, but they're running as K7000 yokes and chassis. And I did the color inversion mod on them, and they work fantastic. They just plug and play right into the original power supply uh, transformer down there, and good to go. Um, but yeah, so to get this thing up and running, I, I polished the bottom legs, uh, magic eraser to the bottom. It didn't need any paint, just needed to touch up and, and clean. But the top needed a full sand and prime and paint and everything. And we'll show that in the pictures, the pictorial afterward here. Um, I got all new buttons and joysticks, original, original Nintendo parts, uh, new control panel overlays for both sides, new locks on both sides, uh, new replacement uh, instruction cards with the Lexan, new hardware everywhere. Uh, these did not light up and the uh, front piece here where that says 25 cents, those were missing so I got brand new inserts, wired those up properly. Uh, this side over here is Castlevania, same story. New instruction card with the Lexan, uh, new buttons, joystick, CPO, hardware, everything, the whole nine yards, this thing and locks, it's all I don't know, factory fresh if you will. The only downside to this is that when they did the, the Neo Geo conversion, they got rid of this plate uh, with the coin inserts and the uh, Nintendo logo and everything. This is this was gone, and they put this blank off plate here. And because they didn't need co uh, coin mechs on both sides for being JAMA and Neo Geo, they could have just wired them in series, but they, for some reason, decided to just to put a blank off plate here. So I'm still on the hunt for one of these. Otherwise, it is good to go. Um, if we open it up, the audio, now the original 1801s, just like the Senyo 20EZ, they have the audio built on board to the chassis and they have the individual volume control on each uh, chassis. But since I wasn't using those, I had to come up with an, a solution for the audio. So I got this little amplifier board here and it runs on 12 volts. And the left channel is Super Mario Brothers. The right channel is Castlevania. So I can't, ha I don't have individual volume control, but if I turn the knob here, you can hear Castlevania is actually running. And if we start a Super Mario game, um, we'll hit just either one of the two start buttons, and we can have one player or two player. Let's just do for shits and grins two player. There we go. Do 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 do. Now if we turn the volume up now, Castlevania's over here, and Mario Brothers is over here. So, you know, there's not really, there's not really any instance that I can think of where you'd want to have volume from one, not the other. I just, you can't equally turn one up higher than the other now, but that's okay. I mean, I can live with it like this. It's going on location at my arcade, so I'm not really too worried about it. These keys are for the coin door box down here. Um, but yeah, so K7000 running on the original 1801 tube, uh, both sides here. And they've got the color inversion mod, obviously, for Nintendo games. And they plug right into the original transformer output, so no problems at all.
Um, I had to repair these. Both of the bezels were broken, had a corner busted off, so I had to repair these with some, uh, not foam core, what's the poster board? Poster board turned out great. Uh, yeah, brand new locks with the cams and everything on both sides. And yeah, really turned out very nice. Um, that's about it. I'll go through here now that the live section is done. A little narration here. I'm going to go over all the pictures and talk about the, the process and what it took to get back to this point. Um, otherwise, it turned out fantastic. So the screws here on the side, um, I just painted those to match. Now, I've seen these without the screws. I've seen some with the screws. And I don't know if somebody in the past, the, the locks were drilled out. So I think they, instead of replacing the locks, they just drilled a hole here. And you can see that it goes right into there. But I don't know if, I've seen some of these with the screws and without, and I don't think that this is something that the operator did that I got it from. Because there's a, there's a little convenient tab right there. It's very convenient. So I, I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not, but um, maybe some of the guys out there that know more about these than I do can answer that. But uh, I did forget to, I guess, talk about the PCB here. Let's lift this side up. Oh, this side's heavier because of the coin mech, but uh, the PCB here, I had to find an original harness. The, the original harness that was in this was hacked up and half here and half not, so I found someone online who was able to sell me an entire original factory versus red tint uh, harness. Got that all installed and routed and hooked up. Uh, it runs along right down here for the control panel and all that. Um, well, what else do I want to say? Oh, so I found a PCB as well, and they were kind enough to send it to me, and it has the high score, Super Mario Brothers high score free play mod, and it requires the battery to be installed, uh, two double A's, but I went ahead and just installed the uh, a coin cell holder, or a coin button, I'm not sure what you want to refer to it as, and retrofitted it here to uh, the positive negative off the holder so now we don't have, don't have to worry about uh, changing out the double A's or corrosion or anything like that and yeah this side's another peek at the monitors from the other side and it's basically good to go just kind of lock the locks again and store the keys and we're good to go so that's about it uh, Let's see if I can get the secret here with just one hand. Oh, time ran out. I guess that's a no. <laughs> but all right, so there you go, guys. Let, let me uh, cut away here. I'll come back and we'll go over the pictorial process here of uh, getting this done. Okay, so here we go. Uh, if you can see here, this is how I picked it up. It uh, was in very bad shape. Soda spilled all over the side here on this side of the control panel. And you can see that they left the uh, player two joystick here in position, but they added a start button in the player one joystick position. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, that's probably the uh, B button, the B button location, the joystick would be over here. This is the B button location. Then they drilled in a bunch of holes here in the control panel to put in the Neo Geo overlay. So, um, I ended up filling up these holes. I don't know what these holes did, what the purpose of these holes are, but I filled these up on both sides of the control panel and uh, painted over them. So I got those. You can see on the side here where those holes were. They didn't even have any hardware in there. I think they, they didn't have keys for the machine, so they put screws in the side. That's why I don't know if that was original or not, because I've seen some of them with the screws and some without. So maybe somebody else simply did the same thing, but I also was missing both coin buckets. The coin bucket here on both sides was missing, so I had to find uh, a bride to buy a brand new one, and then also somebody else was kind enough to send me an extra one they had, so I got I was able to source those as well. And we're going backwards on this, so there we go. So here's it open with the original 1801 monitors in there. Now someone had replaced in their troubleshooting attempts, not knowing the yokes were the problem. Somebody had put in some aftermarket flybacks. And even if I got these running, the, the aftermarket flybacks have that black bar on the side of the image that, that you can't uh, adjust out. And even if I got these running, I, I would not want to have lived with that black bar. 
So I, I would probably would have done the K7000 modification regardless because of that. And now here, sorry, here's the other side. All right, so I got the monitors in out of the machine and in here on the bench, and you can see that, that the uh, horizontal winding on this yoke is 46,000 ohms. <laughs> uh, no, it's supposed to be around two ohms. So that was an indication right there of a problem. Uh, and then the, the vertical was 14.6, which is about, about right. But if we take the yoke out and look at it, right there, look at that, that is corroded so badly that it has arced and sparked and there it's it's open the the winding here is just completely gone the part of the the winding there that is just gone it's crazy look at that that that's after i cleaned it up it's it's this one has uh arced itself to this one and then there's a giant missing piece there so that was my forty six thousand ohm uh reading right there was that if i lifted it up uh, you can see it's just broken, gone. So I used a fiberglass pin here to try and and some magnet wire to try and fix it. And I was able to fix it partially. I got it down to 23K ohm. <laughs> so uh, no, not any better. Isolated it. And then I kept digging and found even more. There's another burned up part right there. Found a bro another broken wire another broken wire, fix that together. And now I'm down to 5.3, hooray! <laughs> Can I still use it? Uh, no. So uh, I don't know why I have this picture in here. Maybe this got put in here. I think this got put in here by accident. That's not, this one has nothing to do <laughs> with the, the, uh, the project here. Um, oh, that's what it was. I, that's the tube that I pulled the K7000 off of. So. I had this extra um, K7000 out of a turbo outrun sitting around. Uh, obviously, you can see it has terrible screen burn, and I decided to use this K7000 off of this. I, I stole uh, I stole this yoke, I stole this yoke, and this chassis off of this uh, terrible outrun turbo burn-in tube, and I used that for the project. So I stole the yoke, C13, and 2.6. So... Uh, even though I got that other, I think I got that other yoke fixed, uh, it still didn't work because the chassis was bad, which I think we'll find out later. Am I going the wrong way here? I'm getting lost. Okay, so that's up. So now we've got a, a, a yoke that we can transplant on. So I think now that's the original yoke. So this is the, the, oh, no, no. Okay. So at this point, at this point, because the yoke was bad, I did not know if the chassis was actually good or not. So I took the K7000 yoke and I modified, I took the wires off and I installed them on the original 1801 yoke. That's what, uh, oh, going the wrong way. That's what this picture is. So this is the K7000 yoke with the 1801 wires on it. So now I have that K7000 yoke on the 1801. And this is what I get. So the chassis does work, but it has uh, severe width problems, width linearity problems. It has uh, it had a horizontal hold issue that would not lock on, and severe disc discoloration because the yoke was not set properly. But I didn't care at that point. So this chassis did function, but it has this black bar on the side here, and that's a, a problem of that replacement flyback. So even if this worked right out of the gate after changing that yoke, I wasn't going to use it because of this black bar. The problem is, look at this chassis work. This this leg here is not connected to anything. The solder pad's gone. Here's what's left of it right here, and the leg from the cap isn't even soldered. It's a giant gap here, so it wasn't even soldered into the board. Uh, this is one of the flyback pins. It's got a giant gap in the solder joint. Uh, here's another one, another cap that someone changed with a giant gap and barely even touching right here. Uh, here's another cap with a giant gap in the solder. And it just, it was just so butchered. I didn't, didn't even want to bother working on it. So this is the second monitor. The second monitor had a blown fuse. So I put my two amp circuit breaker on and, oh, wait a minute. 
No, this is the original still after making some adjustments and trying to get it to work. So at that point, I just gave up completely. The second monitor was, was dead. Um, it had the blown fuse. So I put the fuse on there, and if I recall correctly, I didn't take a picture because it was totally dead. Uh, I checked the B+, it was, it was 82 volts. Uh, I replaced the voltage regulator and it was still 80, 82 volts and it was just as butchered as the other chassis. So at that point I said, nope, forget it. I am doing, uh, I'm putting K7000s on here. So that's what this is. So I did the color inversion mod. I put a piece of foam board down to protect here as a layer of insulation. I drilled a couple of holes to mount some screws. I got the K7000 on here with that yoke because I already had the yoke on there. After getting the yoke adjusted and the convergence, uh, and running off that 100 volt, uh, because this was gonna run in the red tent and the red tent has that power supply with the 100 volt output like the, the uh, Nintendo games do, like the right here. Uh, I wanted to make sure that it would run on the 100 volt power and it certainly did and runs just fine. So there's another shot at the other side and you can see how I have it mounted there. Okay, so now on to the second chassis yoke. Here's the second chassis yoke, and that is just unbelievably bad there. And it's all charred over here as well. And again, same story. This such a in and uh, the corrosion is so ingressed over here that this was just pretty much beyond saving. And the look, look at this. This was running for so long, and it was burning, it was literally burning up. It was, when I was trying to run this, it was sizzling and arcing and it sounded like bacon and frying in a frying pan. And I was like, nope, this one's done too. So after taking it apart and looking at it, yep, there's the source of my sizzling. So I removed that yoke. I, I got, I just happened to have a loose spare 7,000 yoke. These are the skinny neck tubes, by the way, the seven pin yokes, or I'm sorry, the seven pin tubes. Uh, you don't count the the focus pin when t counting the pins. So this is the skinny neck seven pin yoke. Uh, again, tube. Sorry, I'm looking at the yoke with my eyes and I'm talking about the the, uh, the tube. So I got my other spare yoke installed and a second K7000 installed and retrofitted on here. You can see this is the second one. I got this piece of uh, cardboard here as an insulator. And after trimming it up and getting it installed properly, there you go. So now I have both tubes uh, retrofitted for the K7000s. And there's the color inversion mod running the Mortal Kombat PCB. And it looks fantastic. And now the TPG on there with the inverted colors. Now I'll flip, I'm thinking I'm going to flip the inversion color switch on the TPG. And there you go. Beautiful RGB. Uh, this tearing up here is a uh, low battery on the TPG, so don't worry about that. Now it was time to uh, fix the wiring. And so I, I was able to acquire that factory harness, like I said, so I had to make it work with the K7000. So I cut off the original uh, 1801 connectors and, and repinned it to be for the K7000. So those went away and the 7000 ones. So we have uh, red, green, blue ground, yellow is a secondary ground, and uh, this blue wire here is the sink. So it's. It's red, green, red is red, brown is green, orange is blue, green is ground, yellow is ground, and blue is sink. So I got these all hooked up like this, and it works just fine. And there's the back hooked up to the harness. This is the power edge connector for the PCB, and then uh, this whole harness here is for the power. So there's a disconnect, I think, uh, I think this disconnect right here is where the everything hooks up to the power supply. So inside the machine here, uh, you can see how butchered it is. This this thing right here is not factory to the red tent. This is part of the Neo Geo. This is what they use. This is out of a Neo Geo machine. Uh, this is for the audio, and then you have a service switch and a credit switch, and they wired this in. So this had to go away because if you look over here, this service switch, this is a factory service switch for the Nintendo red tent. There's supposed to be one in the same location right over here. Well, I couldn't install it because this was here. So this had to come out and go away. Uh, the power supply was only putting out eight volts on the 12 volt line. So I just, I took it out and rebuilt it, but I went ahead and put a brand new one in. So that's not gonna be a big deal. And over here is where the uh, monitors plug in. And they didn't bother to use any 
they just stripped the wires and stuck them in there. They didn't even bother to use the spade connectors or anything. So I remedied that myself. So all that stuff's ripped out. And there's the factory harness assembly. Um, this all here is the, this here is the power wires and everything and video wires on the service credit switch uh, assemblies. Over here is the connector for all of the control panel wiring. And this is all for power supply and coin counters and things like that. Got all this stuff reinstalled. There's a new power supply. I got the uh, everything installed properly this time. And this is, I ended up purchasing two PCBs. I, I The only PCB I could find online was for a Sky Kid and Castlevania. So this is Sky Kid on one side and Castlevania on the secondary side. And I didn't want Sky Kid. So I, I went searching again and found somebody that was selling a Super Mario Brothers uh, and pinball. Uh, SMB on one side and pinball on the other. So I took that PCB and I took the Castlevania off this one and I took the pinball off of that one and put the Castlevania from this one onto that one. So I had SMB and Castlevania. Now this board that you see here is actually now Sky Kid and pinball. But I mentioned that because I am testing it and you'll see that it is Sky Kid and Castlevania. So here we have the monitor sitting ready to go in. So yeah, so Castlevania on one side, you can see I haven't even started on any of the cosmetic stuff here. Um, just testing to make sure everything is working and it looks fantastic. So I dropped the monitor in just to get a good look and see how it would, how it would turn out after it was done. And it fits just fine. I don't have the, the uh, cover over here yet. And then there's the Sky Kid on the other side. And everything clearances and fits just fine. Close down the, the cover, the very bad, faded, damaged, bent up cover. And we got some degaussing I needed to do because uh, the, you know, when you have all this metal around the tube, it throws stuff off. So it ended up fixing that just fine. Um, yep. So making progress and I, I was trying to find, uh, I, post, I posted this picture online asking if anybody had an extra coin assembly and nobody had one. So yeah, coin bucket was missing on one, on both sides, coin bucket was missing. That's I think the player, the main side, and that's the aux side. Uh, so for the audio I mentioned, yeah, I took the speakers out of the cabinet and wired all this up. So basically this is a little 12 volt uh, audio amplifier and there is a jumper on here. You have to remove the jumper to have stereo sound. So one side, one channel is the main side, other channel is the opposite side, and just runs off 12 volts here coming off the power supply. And these are the connectors that run to the uh, speakers. So I don't, I, I don't think I ended up needing those. I think I took those off and then I just routed the speakers directly to the amplifier. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, there's a couple of jumpers. You have to remove this jumper and this jumper or you don't get any audio so this is the mute so yeah this is a jumper if, the, if this jumper is installed here it's muted on this channel if this jumper is installed on here it's muted on this channel so you have to remove those two jumpers or you get no audio and here it is just kind of mocked up in here and it works just fine and i routed the the power to the uh power supply well that's a video showing it for for online purposes uh, and this is for, for reference, if you guys want to get this for yourself for any reason, here's a reference to what it is. Nope, that one's crooked. Okay, so now we're starting on the control panels. Oh, I had two pictures. Well, no wonder it was crooked. I didn't delete the original one. Yeah, it's just pretty, pretty butchered here. Worn away, all that jazz. These carriage bolts were too big to reuse for the new panel, so I had to use different hardware. It's original factory Nintendo joystick, but the buttons and at least they kept the harness here, so that was good. I had, I had another one I could use anyway because someone sent me an entire harness, but I'm just grateful they didn't butcher it up more than it already is or was. Here's where the original joystick would go and button B, button A, and so, forth, so on and so forth. So they actually drilled one, two, three. They drilled four new holes in the panel. Fortunately, I was able to flatten those down and the new overlay went right on over it without any uh, detriment to the panel. 
everything's removed. And you can see there that they just, I don't know if they, they used a press or what they did, but they just, they, there was so much heat that was done when doing this. Like from the factory, these holes from the factory are punched out. They're punched out with a machine. These are, dr someone drilled these out and the heat uh, deformed the metal here. There's what the overlay off, how dirty it is. Look how dirty this is. Unbelievable this was so dirty. I couldn't believe it. That's all apart. There's the replacement overlay. So I got all the dust off and the dirt and the grime and the grunge and the crusties and, and cleaned it all up, sanded it all down. I didn't do a full complete sand down to the metal, but it was good enough. And then there it is painted with all my new parts. And that's the second one, the other side. Uh, yep, so I got this all torn down in the same way. And here it is all cleaned up and painted. And it's not perfect. I mean, you can see it's not perfect, but this is going on location at the arcade. Uh, so it's going to get scratched up and torn up and rubbed away and and all over again. So I didn't want to completely do a full nine repair on this because a year from now, it'll all be worn away and probably needing repaired again. So uh, if this was going in my private collection, I would have taken all this down to the metal and done it properly. But because it's going on location, it's going to get all beat up again. I wasn't too worried about it. So there's one panel back together and looking good. There's the other. And then, you know, I had to buy all the right spacers. There was only... Uh, online, I can only find, I think, four spacers. There's a, a correct spacer under these two, or under the B and A for both sides, but then when it came to the one, two, three, four, I had to just use a washer stack up because uh, the correct spacers weren't available for the buttons. And on this other one, I had to use the spacer stack up on all of them, which isn't a big deal. And that's the wire harness mess I have to dig through and figure out how to get all this wired back up again. And then here's all the original parts that are going to go bye-bye. Okay, now it's time to get working on the actual tent, uh, the top. So it was pretty bad. So I had to start by assessing the damage. So on this side, you can see all the rust and everything. I'm trying to get to the right page here, the right picture, I should say. All right, so right here, this was all dented up, and I don't know what the heck caused all this. It's dented in over here. That's why there's a shadow. Uh, this is all dented in like there was a wild animal trapped inside trying to get out. So I grabbed a hammer and a flat piece of wood, and I was able to hammer and flatten all this back down properly. So I, went, I didn't show up, but I went ahead and did that all over the rest of the cabinet. Uh, the, the top part of this here, I hammered all the, the dents out. And, I mean, you can see how flat it is now. So it's not perfect, but much better than it was. So I got it all sanded down. I didn't show the sanding part, but I sanded it all down. Got everything primed. And here it is after painting. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better turnout. I obviously didn't do this in the garage. I did it outside, but, um, yeah, pretty good. And that's the color. If you want to do this for yourself, gloss banner red is what color this is. So there is with, there it is with no top on it. Uh, now I've dropped it back in place. And it looks different in the light because of the overhead lights and whatnot. But now it's time for the bezels. Uh, you can see that both of the corners were... So for some reason, both of these corners were missing. And this piece right here... And this piece right here were folded were folded over underneath. You can see this area right here where it's it's lighter than the rest of this. They had this folded over on top of this and taped down. And this was folded down underneath and taped down. Why they would do that, I don't know. But probably to add extra uh, thickness to keep this from sliding around in the monitor frame. But this part here was also folded underneath. This was not. So I don't know what's going This almost looks like somebody did this on purpose. For what reason, I don't know. So I was able to get some poster board and fix this. There's some poster board. I cut these pieces out and hot glued all this stuff back together like this and just pretty much fixed the problem like that. So that's about the only way I could come up with to fix this. And this one actually installed backwards. I put the white part out by accident and I didn't want to redo it. So I just painted it black and it works just fine. 
So yeah, you can see it now inside the, the shroud holder. And there it is in place. There's the Super Mario Brothers side. Yep. So yeah, worked out good. Now I was able to acquire some from a, a guy in Kansas City who makes these Lexan protectors and he sent me a couple of them and I was able to get a couple of these remade from Escape Pod Online. And yep, fits pretty nice. So here's one side all together. I needed to shift the monitor. The monitor was just sitting in place. It wasn't secured. Uh, so I needed to, it wasn't, so you can see it's kind of crooked, but that's because I needed to just raise that bottom corner with and secure it in place with the screw and it fixed the, the, the tilt there. So that wasn't an issue. But you can see here that I'm the coin door lights aren't working. The actual, you know, insert coin 25 cent piece that snaps on over this is missing on both of them. And not only that, they weren't even lit up. So I fixed that later, ran some wires from the 12 volt power supply straight to it and fixed that. Um, and here's the Castlevania side, same story. New Lexan, new instruction card. Got that installed. Castlevania side's looking good with the control panel. I don't have it wired up yet. It's just laying in there. So I haven't cleaned up the bottom or the legs or anything yet in this picture either. So now the control panels are all wired up, factory fresh. Ready to go in. Now here's the PCB. When I got it, it did not have a battery holder. So I installed the, the, the button battery holder with a three, three, a three volt lithium battery. And I just wired it up directly to, I got a, uh, look at that, I got a stray strand right there. I just noticed, oh, interesting. So then I just wired them right to the points where they should go. And that fixed that up uh, quite nicely. So now the I took these bezels off and replaced, I got some brand new pieces and put it all back together. And there you go. So there's a final product. I got the control panel secured in there. I got the monitor secured in there and adjusted properly so there's no more lean to it. PCB installed. So this side is 100% complete. Castlevania, same story. I uh, tied off and secured the audio amplifier so it won't short out or touch anything got that done in there everything is secure new hardware monitor mounted there you go so i got that using the original wire holder so that's not going to go anywhere and secure uh, so now it's time for it to work on the bottom i had to scrape all these stupid uh, stickers off of here this is supposed to actually stay on but i didn't i just went ahead and took it off i can replace it later that's one thing i need to replace are these stickers but i didn't want to mess with them at this point so they went away, they went bye-bye. Pictures, pictures out of focus here, sorry, but I didn't really want to mess with these holes either. They're not really noticeable and no one's gonna be down there on their knees looking at them. So I didn't worry about filling these holes up. I just magic erasered the whole bottom black part and the, I, I never dulled the chrome legs and it all turned out very nicely. So I got four brand new locks with the right cams and everything, got all those installed and it's done. So that took us uh, to where we're at now with the uh, the live part at the beginning. There's a couple dents here I didn't take care of. Like I say, I didn't really go full out because it's going to get dented up again. Uh, people are going to be setting stuff on top of here and scratching it up again. So I didn't go full nine. When, it, when this comes off the floor and I, I sell it or I put it in my private collection, uh, I'll take care of all this stuff later. I'll have to redo all this anyway. So again, I didn't go all the way out, but good enough for what we need to do to get it running and looking good and out on location. So, um, yep, there's the other side. I think we're about at the end here. So I couldn't have asked for a better turnout for what it is and how it went, but otherwise, uh, yep, happy with the end result. Coin buckets installed, new lock and everything, so. I think that there, one more picture possibly. I think, yeah, a couple more. So this is back in its place over by the wall. And I think that's the last picture. So there you go. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments of how this turned out. And yeah, we'll see you on the next video.